Okay, I'll bring the Dumbarton Board of Selectmen meeting to order for Thursday, June 27th. I have uh, all three Suckman present. The town Administrator is present. The town Chief Secretary is absent. She's doing it by recorder. Recording video for uh, the town is Don Larson. Thank you, Don. Okay, gentlemen, I have some uh, uh, minutes, old business minutes. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the June 13th. Uh, meeting as amended. I'll second Bob's motion. Any discussion, gentlemen, about that? No, they look pretty good. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Open up the form for public comment. Um, just remember, please state your name if you have anything to say. Uh, first rule: uh, uh, you're on the agenda, so you're next. You'll be coming up in a short, a short a few minutes. So if you're with us, if you have anything else you wanted to share with us, you may. Okay. Back row, chief. Anything? Good. I'm oh, good. Uh, <clears throat> you have on the solar panels on the agenda tonight. Uh, just briefly about the cutting. How we have to have it inspected. Oh God. I Okay, I'll put this on the general discussion. Okay. Fred, Fred Mullen. Um, I went down there this after, late this afternoon just to take a look, see what they've done. They've got all the trees out of there. They cleaned up every branch that was around. They did a great job. Okay, great. Yeah. And uh, where the panels are going to go, it's been flattened out. So it looks like there's like a lot of flat loom in there now. But okay. Was, yeah. That's what they did. Woody's email, he did say that they spread out the compost. The compost? Yeah, okay. Hey, all the comp- branches, everything has got to hold off. Yep. There's nothing yep. down there. Good, great. So looking good from a, from the town forest perspective, you say it's looking pretty good? From an individual, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> of, the mem- of the committee, yes. Yeah. Okay, fair, fair enough. Very good. We're going to ask uh, Mr. Lavoy to go on down there, too, since he's the coordinator, coordinator between mm-hmm. Dunbar and, and the solar company. Is that... Dana? Yeah, yes. Dana. He, he was down there today. Oh, good. Oh, he was. Good. Yeah. Maybe we just got a phone call, email to him, out to him. Okay. 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 Good. Be able to use Sasquatch if it's satisfactory. Right. That's just one thumbs up, a thumbs down. Anything else? No. Nope. Okay. I just want to commend the fire department uh, before we go on, uh, Chief, and uh, all the volunteers you had there. Good uh, work on the uh, barbecue. I, I heard no one, but uh, no one was uh, dissatisfied from my perspective. Yeah. And uh, I got there early, so I got my chicken right away. <laughs> <laughs> I was dissatisfied. I was hanging. It went by about ten times and had to smell it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, was it a good day for you? Uh, uh, tickets sold? Yep. Oh, good. We sold a lot of tickets, but it was such a nice day. Some people didn't come. Huh? But so I could have swung in with my crew. Yeah, huh? yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> Made some extras. Well, good job. Okay, John. Mm-hmm. Anything? Uh, <clears throat> Don Larson, Birchview Drive. Um, I just have a question in regards to the monuments out in front of the library. We don't have one for the Revolutionary War or for the Civil War, which we have quite a few veterans that are buried in that, or participated. I got a whole list of them in that from Donna Dunn. And I was wondering what would be involved in getting uh, monuments made for those two wars, and would it be a warrant article? It depends how expensive the monuments would be, and then we'd have to try and pick locations for new monuments out there. Yeah. So I think, uh, I don't want to answer for the whole board, but I think that, you know, depending on what size the stone would be and locations and all that would kind of have to be, you know, approached to the board, and then we could kind of look at whether we want to try and do it as something on the board level or put it on a warrant article. Okay. Fred, do you want to add something? Yeah, uh, that was brought up a number of years ago when they started doing the uh, re- renovation of the town hall. They wanted to put a monument up for Revolutionary War. Then they went to the French and Indian War. Then they went to the War of 1812, Spanish-American War. So at that time, it was decided if they put another monument up, it's put up a general one for all the wars prior to World War I. Okay. It was a, as a one monument, but the placement of it was going to hinge on what type of landscaping and what type of work is going to be done on the town hall. That's why nothing's been done at that time. So. And that's a work in progress we don't know for sure. Yeah, well that's that's the reason why, because they were going to talk about putting it on the corner, if you face the front of the building, 
in the right hand corner, mm -hmm. but there was something about maybe changing some of the some design of the building or something, so it was put on hold at that time. Oh, Don, if uh, we don't know if you want to, we can if you want to get estimates, we can at least start looking at it during okay. the design. Yeah, I was thinking that you know the two big wars, you know, or do it by you know the 1800s and the wars and the 1700s and the wars or something like that. But uh, you've got World War II and Korea on this side. This other two could go across that. You got Vietnam at the top and World War One, and you know, in front of the library itself. So you know, it would balance it out to an extent. Yeah. We could at least start looking at it. Mm -hmm. I, I think Dave is spot on with that. It depends. Uh, it's going to depend. I know monuments yeah. are not well, cheap. The request was to have a statue made with him on a horse. You know. So. <laughs> okay. All right. With that, I'll bring it back to the board. All right, um, Linda's not here. We'll defer Linda. We'll keep going. And do we have a check for uh, some money? Well, the check will be written Monday night at, yeah. at your fire department training. So I can make a motion. Oh, it would be. <clears throat> okay, I'll make a motion per RSA 31 colon 95 dash B Roman numeral 3 paragraph B to accept a donation in the amount of $2,625 from the Dunbar and Firefighters Association to help pay 50% of a thermal emission camera. Second. And discussion. But Chief, I got your paperwork on that. This is a one imaging camera. You're going to probably try to get another one for another vehicle? Yeah. This, uh, unfortunately, I was failed a couple of weeks before town meeting. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, might, I should have probably got up to town meeting and tried to have some money out of my account, but I didn't do it. So. I was talking to the association because I didn't have enough money in my budget uh, to pay for it. Uh, and this is a lower end camera and they go from 52 to 12 to uh, or more. So uh, to get us by, I mean, we really need one. You I want, said, well, okay. we'll get the lower end one <clears throat> and the association agreed to pay for half of it. Okay. So. Probably just make it, put it on the warrant for next year? Yep. Okay, good. All right, gentlemen, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Yeah, and I think thank you for giving us the update that you know you'd be adjusting your budget uh, by that other dollar amount too when you come to, come to your budget. Yeah, we might just take it out of the equipment fund. Yeah. I mean that's what it's set up for. So. Okay. Okay. Next item. Um, this is the second uh, discussion, continuing discussion on the on the croakers. Sir, I don't know if we met again. Uh, Mike Minsky, Dave was did a good job filling in for me, but. Uh, uh, <laughs> We did, uh, did some research, and uh, I think uh, the main issue here is we want to get, uh, how do we proceed, how do we get a path for you to get an application for a building permit and for you. And so I think we may have a delineated a path tonight, and I'm going to go over uh, what, what I came up with and what the town administrator came up with, and she did a lot of work doing research and uh, going back many, many years. Okay. First of all, um, Gee Road, uh, from Robert Rogers Road to the first house, that's where the Galvin Driveway now exists. Is a, is now is a, is a class five road. Okay, that puts you into almost a, a shooting range of uh, of a class five road. It's not the thousand. Remember, it was at one time it was considered over a thousand feet. It's not that. Portions of Guinea Road that have elapsed to class six due to non maintenance still remain on that on that road, and so they're still class six, and that includes the property in front that the roadway in front of your property. Okay. Um, so to obtain a building permit, um, we're going to probably require you to um, develop, um, bring that road up to town standards in front of your house. In other words, from the Galvin driveway to your proposed driveway. Once it's brought up to town standards, the town will maintain and repair the section of road as it would do with other roads in town. So once it's brought up, we would plow it, grade it, and maintain it for maintenance on it. As, as every year goes by. Okay, what standards wants to be made? I want street lights and pavement. No, I'm only kidding. Uh, standards are not going to be determined by me here tonight. Uh, the standards are going to be, uh, for in terms of repair and upgrading a road, will be made to, it will be to be determined, will be made at the planning board level. 
and uh, they'll, they'll make the recommendations to um, the select board, to us, for road standards and improvements. And uh, we can say we can accept them, we can lessen them, or make them more stringent. But the thing is, uh, we're going to rely upon the planning board for their input there. Now, I want to point out that road is also a scenic highway. We found that out today. Okay, right. And as a scenic highway, there's some, there's some really concerns that, that they put on that road. And spe specifically, if um, in the roadway, if there's anything like removal of trees or destruction or removal or removal of stone walls, they have to be addressed before the planning board. And likewise, if you have to bring utilities up there, uh, utilities, the utility company can't do a slash and burn on the way up there just willy-nilly taking down trees. It has to go before the planning board also to discuss your plan. So there's two things that have to go before the planning board. One, to discuss, establish the road um, improvements in front from, from that driveway to your house. And secondly, just discuss your plan as how you're going to deal with any trees in the way and all, and all that. And I'm going to end up with one last thing before we go, and then I'm going to open up to your question. What I recommend strongly, and this has been universally across the, uh, everyone I've talked to, is that we make a, a courtesy site visit between uh, the road agent, planning board members, and a selectman prior to your turn going for, before the planning board. That way, you have in your mind what needs to be done, the visual, and the, all those key members will also be out there to take a look at it too. Now I'll open to your questions. Just go back again to what part I would be responsible for. Just from, there's one house on that road now. That's Mike's. Uh, the, uh, yes, that Mike, Mike Galvin. Galvin. From the Galvin driveway to your driveway, wherever it may be. Okay. See, okay. Okay. In other words, there'll be, a, you, the thing is, there was some, there were bantering back and forth. You have to maintain, uh, bring the whole road up the standard, and that's unreasonable. And the uh, thing is, uh, you just have to bring the portion up from, and probably to a very similar standard that is currently existing there now. It's not going to be a request to have it paid with streetlights. I say that tongue in cheek, but it's, we're not going to accept a, a ridiculous uh, commit a requirement like that. Because it is a scenic road, and the thing is, it's a dirt road, it's going to be maintained as a dirt road. But in order for the town to maintain it, there'll have to be good base gravels put down and put good finished coat gravels. Yeah. Now, we had talked earlier when I was. Uh, chairing the board or co-chairing it. Um, are you prepared, did you look at any of the distances from that driveway to your lot yeah. and prepared for the cost of that? Have yeah. you talked to anybody about that? Yeah. That's, that's not going to be, it's not chump change. It's oh, going to yeah. be some dollars. So I just want to make sure before we put the planning board and, you know, the conservation commission will be involved because it's the scenic road and the select board, before we start this whole process, I want to make sure that you looked at that cost and it, that is something you want to incur. See, the last time we discussed this, it was going to be from my, where my land starts, yeah. up to where we want the driveway. And it's almost three times the distance if I go from Mike's. Right. And so Mike's. you're going from Mike's to your property and then a little bit beyond because the town will have to turn around correct, correct, as we correct. talked about. Yeah, yeah. So probably for a, a distance a little past your driveway yeah. so we can have a proper turnaround. So I think they call I, it a hammerhead or something like that so that plows can get up there for the winter. I would kind of have like to have them look at some of the dollar values before we start this whole process and it's something that you don't want to consider because that's... Jeff had told us before this, oh, we could play it on 35 to 55 dollars a foot. So like you said, that's our jump change. That's right. serious money. Right. I have no idea who we're going from, from here. Okay. Would you like a little time to think about it before we start processing and going down that yeah, path? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, but the next step, if you decide to go with that, I would probably, um, my next step would be contact uh, the, through the building department or through Lean so we can get a courtesy site review, oh. a walk with you when you're ready to do it. Yep. And yep. then based upon that, we can schedule uh, appropriate meetings thereafter. Yeah, and then the other thing, Mike, as a board, we'll have to talk about providing a waiver to go past the 300 feet of a class 5 road. Oh, but it's, it's, it's oh, right. Okay, right. so but right, but as a board, we need to do that first. Yeah, so yeah. right now what I'm hearing is they'd like to look at the cost and then come back to us if they do want to approach that. So that's what we wanted to tell you where it was going to start from. Mm -hmm. And now you guys can measure those distance accurately and talk to, talk to some people in town about the cost of that and then determine if you want to come back to us and then we go from there. But the biggest thing is 
we, we as a board need to talk about the waiver because there is a policy in place, as I talked about with you, from the class five portion, 300 foot. If we go beyond that, we'd have to give you a waiver. That policy is in place right now in class six road. What will probably happen is as they develop it, that road in front of their home, that will, it will be a similar thing to the Galvin portion. Yeah, I think we have to give the waiver. Right, it'll be, brought, it'll be brought up, that will be considered, over time, it could be considered class five road again. Yeah. So it passed our driveway wherever it has to go. Yeah, that will be considered class five right. road again. Once it's upgraded. There's yeah. a couple me mechanisms we can do that, and uh, I don't want to get into the details, but uh, I'll put it this way, the town will take the responsibility of maintaining it, mm -hmm. and it will eventually return to a class five status. There's a couple mechanisms, but we don't have to discuss it here. But the bottom line for you all is it will be maintained, plowed and graded yeah. as any other dirt road would be. Realizing the size of the trucks that are going to be plowing this, mm -hmm. what kind of an area do I have to create for them to be able to turn around? I would hold that question to the planning board or the road agent. Okay. Because they would know the turnaround. They're going to know more than me. Okay. And then we have a planning board chair just walked in. I want to introduce him. Have you ever met him? He's Ken Swayze with a he's with a nice uh, white beard oh, there. <laughs> Ken, uh, you may, came in at the latter part, but do you have any comments that uh, you want to uh, say that would be helpful to these folks? Yeah, Dave, I don't mind. I'm going to step in your territory a little bit. The 300 foot waiver that the selectmen established as a policy years ago was, was tantamount to a driveway extension. At that time, the average driveway in town was in the neighborhood of like 300 feet, where it would be a reasonable driveway. And it, would, it was put in place that at the end of, say, the Class 5 road, where it starts to be Class 6, they could go 300 feet and treat it as if it was a driveway, including plowing it themselves or whatever. The, but it would have been typical driveway standards of, say, a residential thing. Now, if they're going to do some upgrade that the town is definitely interested in through this way you're talking, that would actually become a class five road or a town right. maintained road. It's a whole different complexion. The I idea was not to allow people three, uh, 1,400 foot driveways. But Ken, in order to start the process, once you go past the class five process, you, once you go past the 300 feet as a select board, we have to give them a waiver to that policy. If we don't give them a waiver to that policy, that policy is in place to get a building permit past that Class 6 road. Now, I know once the road is upgraded, that will change the classification, but we can give them a building permit without even changing the classification of the road, okay. just with the updated requirements as we send them to the planning board. Okay, you could do that, but you're, doing, you're just giving them an interim thing. The planning board, now, you understand, this is an existing uh, subdiv subdivided lot. All right. We don't have the jurisdiction as a planning board to invoke any requirements now. Right. It's all history. However, uh, typically, we, we have other projects in town that this has happened on, and we do not allow the issuance of building permits as a planning board or a building department until the road is in existence for class five road standards. Right. For instance, the Chan subdivision. Even a, a, a road a, a down here, the, the uh, Souls, there was a one house thing technically on a class six road, but until it was brought up to the standards required by the planning board or the town, the building permit was an issue. Here's why, it's not like it's a subdivision road, you know, which right. is big. Now technically, you probably could ask for a bond and the idea is, that, just a suggestion, you don't want to be talking class six roads anymore. We're not trying to do that as a planning board in this town. We're not looking to do that 300 foot extension. People have complained there's also some legal aspects in other towns that it's onerous. In other words, because some people say, I can never use it. But the answer is to try and get people to upgrade our roads. Ken, did you, did you miss the part where Mike had said, uh, when, before you come in, that we were going to... I obviously if, missed it <laughs> before it came if, in. If they, if they decide they want to expend this money on that portion of road, which they're still in the process of determining that, then they're going to go to the planning board for recommendations. All we do is recommend. Right. That's right. right. So you guys will do a full recommendation, and the Conservation Commission, because it's a in. scenic road, will chime in. and you know. So we're going to send them through that process, and we worked with town council to try and get this process laid out 
and he said, don't worry about whether it, a class six or class five road at this point, because at the end, we can make a determination as a board to upgrade that road or put it on a town warrant or whatever we want to do. It's a bunch of different ways we can do it. I so, agree. That, that, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, so we were trying to more get the process going for these people, but they still have some costs that they want to consider. I guess just trying to bring up that we have not used that policy by the select board in years, a long time. Right. We've always tried to do the upgrade, and it's always worked out fine. It's been 300 feet only because it, re it relates to a standard driveway. Yeah, and in talking with our town attorney, he said that that seems too stringent, so we would do yes, a waiver. Yes, he's correct on that too. So it's too we stringent. Would, yeah. If they want to go this route, we would start the the procedure, well, the process way. to get yeah. them going. And the, the bond is something I can see what the planning board has yeah, to say. You know, that's something you guys could figure out. Yeah. It's not really in the RSA. On a subdivision, we have to accept the bond. Right. Yeah. You know, because the, 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 the red legislature says we have to allow them to start the process. Right. But for instance, they you could do the same thing, just a suggestion. But on subdivisions, they can start building immediately, get building permits, but you can't get a CO. Right. What, what we're talking about, I think, is um, you know, if you were decided tomorrow you wanted to build it on it, and uh, the road wasn't upgraded, um, technically we, we said, well, you can't have it until the road's done. And so what we require, something we may require, is a bond for that amount of money, which would be refunded to you after you brought it up to standard. And that way you could start the process. Follow? I, I think so. Okay. Well, in other words, it's, it's, it's an opportunity to It's an opportunity to 400 feet at, at $50 a foot. That's what's going on. Okay. Right. Now. right. Well, that's that, as Dave said, that's the decision. And that's, why, and that's why I want you to measure that distance from that last driveway that's maintained to where you'd like your driveway, plus a little bit for the town turnaround, then determine if you want to spend that money and then, you know, come back to us at that point, and then we'll make the appropriate decisions, I guess. Cause it sounds a little premature to me. And uh, we don't want to corner you in tonight to make a decision. It's your dollars, not mine. <laughs> Can I add one more thing? Go ahead, Ken, please. You're good. Sir, what's your first name? Sir, you're Dave, Dave. Dave. Hey, let me just tell you something about the real life in Dunbar, seeing people before the planning board. If somebody puts in a full-blown subdivision today where they buy a piece of land and they want to put a road in, they could be paying four hundred to five hundred dollars a running foot to build that road. I mean, it's very expensive to build subdivision roads. You're on a place where it's it's already subdivided. If if your location, for instance, didn't have any other all the lots on the other side, you bought a piece of property developed, and you could put the road and get lots on both sides, you would really be paying a lot more because you couldn't put any lots on that side. For instance, uh, it was conservation land or somebody else's land, and, and they couldn't use the road or wouldn't. Go with it. This is not cheap stuff. I mean, anymore. <coughs> this is really, you know, something that prevents builders all over, people with lots of money from doing stuff. We have tried. We're better than most towns on allowing liberally getting to class six roads. I personally, I'm not speaking for the planning board. I personally believe you have a right to use your land for residential living purposes. And for the last ten years, we've been trying to. Put that in place at a reasonable cost. Thank I, hope, you. I hope that helps. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we look forward to hearing from you. Yes. And, and uh, but this first step would probably be a site walk first. And the thing is, I would let ask you talk contact Lean, town administrator, and she can coordinate with the people. I'll be honest with you, she's going to be out for one week. So, <laughs> okay. but the holiday, I don't think you're going to be doing the holiday. But thereafter, we we can get the, some people out there to do a walk with you, and that would be the next step. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That would be the next step after we find out. No, no, no that would be a first step first. Right. Mm -hmm. and as I want you to do the walk before you go into the planning board. Before everyone has a, a grasp of what they're talking about when they come to a meeting. Uh, this is one thing to talk about. It. It's another thing to go out there with a road agent, yeah, yeah. giving opinions, yeah. and you can do this, you can do that. This is what I expect. You have an expectation before you go into the meeting and a visual. So if we contact myself, you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we say that we would like to go up and, and start the <clears throat> proceedings. Does it mean that we're going to do it? It just means that you're going to do a walkabout and yes, just look at We're look interested at it. and we want to see what our options are. For Correct. Right. Right. And you'll meet with a planning board member, a selectman, and a road okay. agent okay. so that everyone can be on the same page. Okay. So would you call that a, a consultation meeting of some mm -hmm. sort? Yeah. That they'll advise you as to what you can expect and what would be best for you and for the town that section. Wonderful. But again, you know, that quick math on the distances there that can be done and then you can determine. 
you know, if you want to go go through that process. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you're very Thank welcome. You. Uh, what, what, we're, what I was saying earlier, there are different ways of becoming a class 5 road again. Do nothing, it becomes a class 5 road. Uh, go to the town meeting, we can uh, have it voted on as a class 5 road, or lay it out. It could be laid out as, a, as another meeting. So there's different mechanisms. I didn't want to go into uh, details for them, because if we just do nothing, it will become a class 5 road. Technically, they could do that. You know, go to the town meeting and say, we want to want to make this a class five road and to have no upkeep, no new, yeah. new construction or anything. The voters vote yes on that. Yep. It's a class five road. Yeah. And and just for the record, uh, I learned more about this is an interesting book. <laughs> yeah. Hard road to travel. Yeah. And uh, we used to have one copy in here and disappeared. So Lean bought us each a copy. I read That's a lot of great about it. I, did you lean? That's good. It's excellent. And, uh, yes, I and what I what I found about scenic roads is that the town can maintain the road a scenic road, pretty much any way it sees fit. So, the thing is, we were worried in the past where we maintained that road when we shouldn't have been. Uh, this is a Guinea Road, and not really. We can we can maintain it as we see fit, as a town sees fit. And we'll talk about selectmen and the road agent. Another way to get away with that on this doing uh, scenic roads, for instance, is that the RSA requires that uh, a road maintained by the town all year round on a seasonal basis. Right. And if you don't plow it. For instance, it's no still, still a class six road. Yeah. So okay, and I, I just want to reemphasize. We thought as a board it'd be good to go through the planning board and the conservation commission and have the input from those boards to come back to us. Then we can make final decisions or decide if it's good or bad for the town. But having a board like that look at it, where they do roads all the time, we thought was a better avenue to go through. By the way, you could put George. George on the list. He's on the planning board too. He's also on the conservation commission. Yeah, I've already talked to the conservation commission to this evening. Um, uh, Brett St. Clair. Brett Clair. And I gave him a heads up that it may be a joint meeting and he'd be willing to entertain that. That's good. Yeah. He'll bring it to his members. Okay, moving on. Linda, welcome. Come on up. Share some good news. I was starting to brag about you earlier. I've been, I've been busy licensing dogs. Ooh, <laughs> down to 39 dogs. Oh my goodness. Um, so it was just, gentlemen, it was just 50 two days ago. It was 50 this morning. Yeah, it's 50 this morning. So, you know I've had a line at the end of the month for cars. And, so, do we have to talk about the dogs when they all sat down? No, we're still 39 dogs. There's a procedure. So, <coughs> what happens now? This is my letter to the Board of Selectmen, just asking you to uh, issue a warrant. A warrant. A warrant for the PD to collect the civil forfeitures. So I have taken the liberty of preparing the warrant so you don't have to. You made three copies, so you can have a copy for your records. Yep. And, and then a copy for me and a copy for the police chief. Yep. So I can sign those three. That's okay. Uh, just a reminder that that list is uh, protected by statute. It is as confidential as uh, so many of the other things that we handle. If you recognize anyone on the list who you know has moved out of town, it'd be a great help to the PD. Uh, not to this letter you're speaking about will go to 39 pages. They, these people, along with several hundred others, already got emails in March if they had an email address and it didn't go to their spam. Uh, we, Hope and I sent out well over 200 letters. Actually, Hope took care of all of it. Sent out over 200 letters in May to people who had still not licensed their dog. And that 200 letters represented almost 400 dogs, somewhere between three and 400 dogs, and because some people have multiples. Okay, so, so that happened when in May? In May. So and then they, what happened after that? Uh, they were given deadlines, as I stated in my letter. And if they didn't come in by the deadline, then by the law is when I turn over the list. Chief Sklut graciously offered to uh, take that list and preview it and make some phone calls before physically knocking on people's doors. So uh, Laura Catabriga made a lot of phone calls to people saying, you need to license the dog or this is what happens, or next we have to issue the civil forfeiture in hand. So the phone calls made by the, the PD 
specifically Mara went a long way to getting this list cleaned up. Which just shows I get no respect no. because they ignored my letters. Can I ask you a question? Bag. Did they call everybody? I gave them, they have phone numbers. I no, give them this list on an Excel spreadsheet. Did they call everybody? They did not tell me they called everybody, but I'm pretty sure that they did because Laura spent a couple of weeks making phone calls. I know they did call some people. I just want to make sure if we went through a step, we were. They're not required to call. I know they're not required, but if somebody comes back and says, why did that person get called, but I never got called? That's what I'm worried about. I was wondering. Inconsistency. Right, exactly. If some people are getting a favor of a phone call and some are not. That's what I'm worried about. If the police call. Excuse me, it's time for me to take my bird feeders in. My alarm just went off. Don't thought it was his. It's my bird feeder reminder. The bear's gotten too many of them. Sorry about that. PD's not required to call, but they do. And I think Laura had mentioned there was one person she couldn't get hold of, but I know they really went all out. So you think they called the majority of them? Yes. I'm sure they've touched just about everybody on the list, but everybody on that list was sent a letter. One? One letter. That's We're not required to, except for that one, the, the notice that they're going to get the civil forfeiture. That's the only letter we're required to send. And can we have met that requirement. Can you remind me, did we send out a second letter last year? We did not. When this came up last year? No, we did not. Wasn't that the direction you guys gave her to send out the second letter? I thought so. And that's where you did it this year? Uh, the last year, I believe it was left that um, because we weren't in the parameters of the time frame, that we let it go, that we not have the police pursue it. But I pursued what I could. Some of the people on that list got letters last year. So they got the standard. Happened. They got the standard notification. Right. And then they got one letter. Standard notification. That their dog licenses are due. There's no standard notification. The town's not required to notify them. It the uh, responsibility is on the owner. So in in. You may, let's say, they're all due. They're, yeah, they're due April 30th. April 30th. And, and then they've been one letter since then. So those who didn't come in by May, Got a letter. Right. Got a letter to saying come in. And then after June rolled around and the deadline had passed, Can that's when we started, started making yeah. phone calls. I just want to be clear on the steps, Linda. I don't no, that's okay. have a dog any longer, so I don't really... Well, well, I find it interesting. The majority, a significant number of them, were registered last year. So it's not like they took. I mean, one year they were just right. registered a year ago. Right. Now a few of those people on the list, and I will go over this with the PD. I have a more inclusive list that has their phone numbers and email addresses, which is what I send over to the PD. This is on an Excel spreadsheet, but there are a few people who. Um, I know for a fact have a vet appointment. One has a vet appointment tomorrow at 745. One has a vet appointment Monday. So I know that there are people who are really working on getting it done. And I'll let the PD know so that they can put them at the bottom of the list. Um, I was saying, as you said to me earlier in the week, it's about rabies. And they have to get the uh, rabies certification so before they get a license. Correct. Now, um, this letter would go out to the residents that are on that list, right? No. Oh, the letters already went out. Do you, do you want to see out. a sample of the this letter that went out? will go out. No, that's no. just, no. you're Russia. giving her permission to, to serve that. You're asking the Who's police to it. When is it going out? Who's sending it out? I'm asking you to issue a warrant to the police department yeah. to collect the civil forfeitures. So each person will get this notice no, no, no. That's like the They've tax warrant that the Board of Assessors it. signed. Right. We notice. create the warrant, an authorized board signs the warrant, and that allows the tax collector to collect it. In this case, it's allowing the police department to collect That's it. That's a great way of explaining it. This is allowing So the when are the people going to get notified of this $25? They already have been in that letter that she right. sent in May. I've been collecting it. Everybody who came okay. in after their deadline, I've been collecting it when they come in. Now the police physically go, and they, they issue it with a long with a court date. It's, it's issued on a special, like a dog violation form. 
along with if you don't. So the police, the police department will be running around to all of these houses to handle mm -hmm. Which is why they were making some phone calls to eliminate that running around. 39 is a lot better than 140 last year. Yeah. Well, then 100, 150 last year. Almost. And so we have 39 left on this list. Correct. And That's it. We're down to 39. Compared to and, 150 And of those 39, I know for sure three of them have bed appointments within the next couple of days and will be in on Monday morning because they are aware that I have to include them on the list because they are not officially licensed. Is there a yet. danger required that we send this out? Is there a what? No, what's it, the, the timeline that we missed last we week? We waited a week to send this out. Is it going to cause a problem? No, that you're signing those so that she gets a copy, Lean gets a copy, the and chief the gets a call. Right. Yeah. Is it going to be a problem if we sign this in two weeks instead of tonight? I'd have to go back and look at the statutes and see what your time frame is. We basically, we're the, I recall last year there's a window and we missed the window. There's a window and we missed it. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to miss it this year because we've done such a great job of getting this list cleaned up. I think this is probably one of the best years you've had. Well, I've got some great help with my deputy. I'm not David S. Oh, sorry, you're David A. And James, and James. All right, it's okay. Right over it. Um, Anna, what do you notice think about some of the police department out to collect these? Um, I, I think it's, uh, we don't have any other enforcement agency. There's no dog catcher in town. To me, I have no problem. They have to ride around town anyways. And we, we can send a certified letter, but that can get ignored just as easily as the emails in the previous letter got ignored, and then the police are going to get some How point. many people were on this list before the police department called around? I'd have to go back and look. But you would think it's just off the top of your head. It was triple that. Triple, so triple. So 100 and a half. Or yeah. yeah, it was 100 and a half. Some of those people may have moved. Some of those yeah. people, they may not have been able to get hold of. I recognize some moved. that haven't moved. <laughs> Do you? Some of the dogs have died. Some of the dogs, dogs, dogs may have died, died, too. died too. You know, but I don't see a problem with signing it. And, you know, if you start <coughs> to get to some of the people, the word may get around it. You know, Tommy's business. And the thing it's is, a, it's a public safety issue, it's too. A it is a public safety issue. And, um, it's because what's happening is people are finding that it, they're forcing the, the the owners to go to the vet because they have to uh, give them the vet uh, the rabies vaccination. And that's and what I, it's all I about. think it's a law that they have to get a rabies shot. I'm pretty sure that it is. But it's uh, the PD involvement has been great in cleaning up that list. You know, the letters that I sent out initially, uh, you know, I get so many responses, and then the responses stop coming in. But with the police department making the phone calls, now I'm getting additional stuff that says their dog passed away, the dog was rehomed. So had I known that, and had the dog owner notified me right away and said, I don't have my dog, the dog passed, I could have taken them off the list, and that would have been one less phone call the PD had to make. But it's, it's gotta be a group effort. You know, the owners have to kind of understand that we are required to maintain this and to follow up. Now, I think the police department, they get a call from the police department, you know, this is serious business. I mean, it's not its not being blown, just, no, just, just blow it off like right. I did last year. Right, because in the past I have not had the staffing to, to really this pursue is, it. This is, uh, takes a monumental amount of time to keep on top of this, to, to get the list to that point. So. I, I have no problem with that. I don't have a problem either. It's not any different than an unregistered vehicle. Except this one runs on full legs. We've got over 700 dogs in town. That's so almost a lot of dogs. Almost one per family on an average basis. And that's just based on the, the dog license number. That doesn't include, there are some people who have a group of five or more dogs that only get issued one tag. But I, I have to uh, commend the police department for really working at, at getting the list to this point. They've done a fantastic job. But I, I know their time could be best used. Well, it's not, it's, 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 we don't have a huge crime rate, a crime uh, wave in here. And, uh, uh, but still. It's, it's, still. It's, to me, it's part of, uh, part of responsibilities of contributing to the community. That it 
it's not it's not about making money for the town. It's, it's definitely not a money maker. Although with a small increases may have helped a little bit. It will help offset it. But it'll really just cover you know the materials, the tags, the exactly. Well, hopefully this updates your list so we don't have to do this every year because I'm not particularly in favor of sending the police department all running around with those. Well, no, but the, the law says you know I'll dig up the statute for you. And we missed it last year, and the law didn't come down on us. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, 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 think, think, of it, think of it as Dunbar's a safer time. Maybe we do it every three years and send the police department out. I think I got this deputy who might be town clerk one day, and I have to set a good example. So I got to clean up my act so that if she, when she takes over, she's doing it the right way. Okay. Now, on so, another note, yes. that polycarbonate glass is available at Amazon. They're 24 inches wide, which is a width of your desk, by 36 inches. So it's I'll talk to you about it, so thank And you. I think it's 90 or $99. But the thing is, the last, it'll, plexiglass, you're going to replace it in a couple of years because you won't see through it. And this is a lot better than, you should know because there ain't glasses with that. Uh, Netflix glass, uh, not Netflix glass, uh, polycarbonate, yes. Polycarbonate, yeah. About three feet the, the joke was that with polycarbonate is uh, you could take a 22 caliber bullet shoot it about 50, uh, 25 feet away, and it would, st it would stop the, uh, the, the, fr the the lens would not shatter. I won't say much about the frame. The frame may not hold the lens. You may have the lens in your head, but the thing is it'll stop. It won't go through the lens, though. It will fall out of the frame. Who used a 25? Ah, <laughs> oh, they're out there. A little, little Saturday Night Specials. Hey, that desk makes all the difference in the world. Good. What about this desk here? What, uh, oh, I was going uh, I don't think anybody wants it. I think I had someone in the office that was kind of interested in it, but did you have any plans for that? Uh, if, if it's going to go to the dump, I'd love the, the top itself. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have no use for it okay. in the office. And so Linda said that she was going to try to find uh, legs for the other top yes. that's slightly damaged so that right. she can create uh, another, another uh, nice uh, work area. Another nice work mm -hmm. area. Which is fine. Just work with lean on on the yeah, list yeah. of things to do. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, if I like to see that out of here, maybe in two weeks. Oh yeah. And so no, it'll if, be gone if, it's, if, it, if no one else wants it, um, go for it. If if, it, if we have three people want it, we'll do a raffle. We have, right. we have someone coming in. Yeah, I'm interested in the the counterpart. Yeah, I think Donna myself. was also. So we'll draw for that or okay. yeah. something for yeah. that. But then, okay. as far as using the desk itself in my office now. Okay. Oh, I thought Donna didn't want it. So she said it would be a good organization. No, it's just for fire reasons. Yeah, it goes, it needs it. It needs it within the any department in the town. Yeah, we don't have the room for it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I need to collect some papers from you over here. Thank you. Two copies plus all the paperwork you had. Are you here? And I have mine here. Yeah. And that is over to you. So that goes with this? Yeah. Okay. So that's all the package for you. Thank you. Thanks, Linda. Thank you. Okay, I want to continue with the mailbox if I could. Uh, we've got a great letter from Senator Kavanaugh. Um, he gave us a summary of the budget. And it's too, if it passes without uh, being unrestricted, would the town make it 67K approximately in unrestricted revenues? And the school will get 93K in unrestricted revenues. And totaling of uh, $160,000 back to the town. That's in the budget right now. Uh, it was just an update from our senator. So uh, thank you to our senator for keeping us abreast of what important things there. The thing is, it's uh, whether it's passed or not, there's going to be some. Um, um, negotiation with, with, with that, I'll, the budget fight is not over yet. All right, moving on. We get the fire departments done. It's done. Uh, this, uh, thank you, Lean. There was uh, just on. Uh, there was a graveside service for Mrs. Crosby who passed uh, earlier this year. Um, I I represented the selectmen there, and uh, it was a very nice ceremony. It was in the paper. If anyone wants to read that, Concord Monitor on May 22nd. Um, we've got an update from the, uh, Woody gave us a great update about the, uh, what's going on at Transfer Station. Basically, remember the call, the sinkhole has been eliminated um, and uh, burn pile has been burned. Uh, you all read that. Burned. Burned. Yeah. 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 Ye
No, it's been burnt. I saw it uh, smoldering the other day. Uh, new pickup is in the shop and worked on, which is good news. He's getting all the accessories installed. Um, and as a correlator to that, uh, we already talked about the, um, the uh, tree, trimming. tree trimming. We're just going to get an up, uh, update, update on that. There's one application that came up. What I'd like to do is, uh, that's a summer worker. I don't want to delay this. I would say normally there was one selectman who sits on the meeting. Right. Well, she's going to get uh, Joe Marie. Okay. Get in touch with Joe Marie and Woody. Okay. And whatever's convenient for them, I'll modify my schedule. I can be there. Okay. Uh, so you can hire him right away. Yeah, rather than waiting two weeks for bring him for the whole board, I like to have a vote for the board to give you the authority. If you feel the candidate is acceptable, make the hire. What do you think, Dave? Uh, it's just for part-time summer help, and I don't have any problem. With yeah, that. I'd rather get it going rather than waiting. I mean, if Woody, it seems that he's interested in them anyhow, mm -hmm. you know, and they don't, I don't want to slow them up with not having enough help. Yeah. So if you, if you give the thumbs up, I think uh, you have consensus from us that you, you, we're going to give you the go green light to make the decision. Okay. okay. I don't have any problem. We'll still make a formal motion, Bob. Yeah. A week after, but I don't have any problem. Right. Him in the pipeline. The other thing, while we're on that subject, Woody has a volunteer, and in his letter, he has asked us to talk about that to see if the volunteer can work down there. My suggestion, if the volunteer wants to work down there, a substantial amount for Woody, we should make sure that he has the proper gloves, the proper safety glasses, and the boots. Yeah, I think they have to. They have to be equipped the same as right. anyone else. So, so about that. Uh, Woody's asked us a couple times to get back to him now on that. I have already. I asked for more information because I think you right. guys, as a board, couldn't decide, not knowing whether he would have the boots. Yeah. And so we'd like to know, I guess, how much, how substantial a volunteer the guy wants to be, because that's some additional summer help you could draw on, and. I think if we equip the person, as Bob says, I don't have any problem with that volunteer either. I'm going to tell you, they've had they've had people that are doing uh, community service well, stuff working there, yeah. so it's not a big issue. And for the cost of a pair of boots, if the guy's going to work there for any amount of time, I, th I think you're getting a bargain. And he's got someone that he can rotate into that process because that's his problem. Yeah, my we biggest get. concern is that they have the same safety equipment to, yeah uh, I, but I don't want to see this gentleman being used to uh, offset uh, workers who are working and losing hours I just want to make sure that doesn't yeah happen. that's right as well right to fill in during vacation that's one thing that's but not, not to not to save try to save a few dollars on someone else or to help know, if someone take if someone wants a Saturday Saturday off or weekday off okay. for some reason would utilizing you, right. that would be the last you don't want to take hours away right. from someone that's next, next week, do you want to uh, maybe have him come in for just to chat with you and at the same time you do an interview? Well, Who's that? The volunteer? Well, he's going to, he's, we're going to meet with the volunteer. Okay. No, no, this then, is not a volunteer. This is going to be a paid employee, this one. That's a paid employee. Oh, that's a paid employee. Yeah. That this will be the volunteer. I don't know who this volunteer well, is. Well, yeah, maybe we should let Woody in. Well, yeah. 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 We must have some information yep you can come in and just check with chat with chat bob I, I, maybe in the direction is to give woody a direction that this isn't to you know to take away hours from someone else right. in order to get a volunteer do well, what are we have lee put an email we want to make sure that the volunteers used not to take away hours well i think that could be done in person with bob bob's going to be meeting with him in, uh, next week i don't think he has going to email i want to stay away from email if we can Okay. Do you want to communicate? You know, we'll be able to communicate that to what he would sure. meet with them. Sure. Okay. So I'll work on it's getting. It's probably easier that way because okay. sometimes people, like I said, people don't read emails the way you mm -hmm. intend that they're going to read them. Okay. Are we done? Can we move yeah. on? Okay. Um, next item was uh, the the coffee house over here wants to put a banner up for a month. You remember how they had a banner when they had the grand opening? They want to put a banner up again. And. Uh, uh, I guess it must be for the month of July coming up. You know, Mike, it's the summer months, and I don't really have a problem with the banner. And, you know, I think it is nice to have that restaurant available to the townspeople, and if it gives them a little bit of uh, publicity, publicity and, and increased business so that they can stay in business. Didn't they have, a, have, did a, they have a trouble with the original banner because of the weather when it went up? I don't remember. I, I just, it was the middle of winter. I don't think it was really okay. They had to change the direction of it because I think it worked out better or between the trees, but... I just want to ask one question to Don. Um, 
When did your banner going up for uh, for the our, her old, old home day? Yes, yes, sir. We'll probably put them up around the mid July. It's, I don't want to have too many banners up here, right? But we'll we've got one on the Commons. We got one in the community center. And I'll put Paige's Corner. I got three other banners, and they're double sided, so they'll be able to see. Okay. Traffic I'll, I'll, I'll actually right. have one banner up. They can use the they put their banner up until it's ready for all the home day. Okay. Is that all right? What do you think, gentlemen? I don't think it matters if there's two banners there. Yeah, his is on the other side already. Yeah, on the his other is side. On okay. Much. All right. Then. Yeah. All right. So. All right. And uh, that was one item with them. So I we want to make sure to do. I want to make sure to do the month. Make sure that that's highlighted. Early. Okay. One monthly. Now the second item is uh, uh, Jason, uh, Jason, Justin. Justin. Justin had competed to do we, we competed with a contract for the not a contract but a, a, a bid, bid yep. for the uh, bathroom. He can't do it. And the question is, uh, he asked if uh, we had the alternative other people on the list we should pursue it. I need to see the we need to see those uh, bids again. Okay. Um, in the in the process, we have this gentleman Matt that we were going to hire, and right. he. He's a handyman. I've asked him to take a look at the bathroom, see. You talking about Matt Vashon or? No, that's. Um, we use the last names for you know He's the one that repaired the, the library, library door. door. Oh, okay. okay, and All right. so he said he would give us. He would take a look at the bathroom, and then he's um, based on our joint loss meeting. There were a few other things that I have to address within this building. That I'm going to have them take a look at. So you'll bring that to us anyway. Next okay. Week, when you do that, thing, can you bring out the original bidders too? Bid. That's yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We need word for word first. Okay. Uh, this is uh, we got a FEMA notification, uh, an update on uh, flood control maps, and it's going to be some public hearings for them. Um, these are uh, risk uh, flood risk review meetings, also known as workshop meetings, for communities to review their work maps. It's going to be one in Massachusetts and Haverhill, Manchester and Concord. We need to have, have someone attend. I think someone with some uh, experience. I think Ken can, should go. I'm thinking someone <laughs> or consider the chief fire department maybe? I've actually, um, the first time the maps came up, it was handled by this office with, with where I was. I did ask Donna if she would be interested in representing the town because she would be the department that the people would go to if they had to inquire as to whether their property is in the flood zone. Um, she said she'd be willing to go probably Perfect. in an hour or two. So Donna would? Donna would be interested in going. Um, Can you get a copy of the letter in case you wanted to go to? I didn't see it. It's, it's in the mail. It, it's in your mail uh, basket. Uh, the, the other thing too is the Conservation Commission was made yes. aware of it, which they have the yep. flood control yep. preview for the town. So. Maybe and Donna could reach out to see if Brett is going to go as well. And Just for the board's information, when they first set that up, it was determined that there are no homes in Dunbarton in the flood. Thank you for saying that. I was just going to bring that up. Um, the only areas that are potential flood areas are the Army Corps engineers, and there are no residential homes in that area. The key thing is uh, Donna's going to reach out to those uh, people. we got an RSVP on that. Yep. Okay. No hundred year I, flood zones or anything? Can I quick history? Sure. We spent a lot of time at the planning board level because we posted that whole thing. We had to do it. Mm -hmm. Federal funds. She was around. You were around for that. Yeah. We go through this whole ordeal, map things out. We had a fellow here from FEMA, a mm -hmm. woman on occasion, and many a meeting. And at the end, I got a certified letter saying we don't qualify for anything. Because we don't have anything. We don't have anything. Yep. But we can't issue any building permits in a flood zone. So that's what came out of it. And it's a whole chapter in our zoning ordinance, which means absolutely nothing physically. Okay. Are you okay? You, you hanging on to your seat? Yeah, I love the government sometimes. Are you ready for the next one? Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, moving right on, I got an update from the, from the building and planning and zoning. It seems like we have approved sub, uh, a site plan which was uh, approved and submitted, yet the gentleman is, uh, is obviously using the property because uh, you can see horses on his property and uh, he's not completed his work. And he said he does not intend to do further site work until he talks to the solar, uh, he talk, wants to talk to the road agent. So he's in violation right now of the, uh, the stipulations delineated by the planning board. Well, do we know he's in violation? Yes, because the work is not completed. It's a drainage into the road on uh, Kimball Pond Road. That's one out. 
for instance. Now, I did see Billy Nichols working there on that roadway. A while ago. This spring, right? Oh, yeah, I heard he was Within a month ago. Yeah, this is a within a week. And he's, he doesn't plan to do anything else. So the thing is, uh, I'd like to maybe have the road agent, who's also a member of the planning board, just talk to him about, especially the drainage, and I don't know about the other police. He doesn't tend to do further site work. So the thing is, uh, we're going to have to uh, deal with this, whether it be, uh, it might be problematic down the road. And I'm going to ask for the planning board, maybe if they could just, um, when I come to you this at the next planning board meeting, maybe we got to come up with a summary. And so... Yeah. Uh, we may have to. We may require. Uh, Can I add something work? to this whole mess? Uh, you go right ahead. Well, the thing is, he went through a big process. It wasn't just with the planning board. It was with the zoning board, and it was with the conservation commission. There were lots of restrictions on that property. He went through it, spent a lot of money, and then he came to the planning board with all that his history, and wanted to have a commercial operation and it was a well done project, well prepared project. There were some things that he ultimately didn't like. He came back to the planning board and we had a, a review and lessened the impact of some of that drainage requirement. Uh, but now the rumor or the statement to others is that he just wants to have it continued as a project as others have in this town like Patty Sheeran and who's the lady uh, over on which boat the doctor lady has a big barn? Oh, oh. Twist Hill um, Road, I don't know. Yeah, Yuki Agari? Yeah, that's it. But she hers is definitely private. Hers What's that? Different. That's what I'm talking about. Right. So they have private big buildings. They never had to go to the planning board, had, didn't have to do anything. They, the building department over the years is certified. I even checked out Patty Sheeran's place one day, a long time ago. People thought she was having a big commercial thing. Not true. Looked on the internet the whole bit. Okay, so we got two. It's not just those two, but there's two big, similar operations. And then we got uh, Cater, Stables. Cater Stables, which didn't even have approval for the first phase because we didn't have stuff in the zoning uh, for it. So, Mr. Botnick also wants to just be treated like that. He wants to be reduced to a regular uh, operation, you know, like personal. Well, that's okay. Maybe he could do that. He spent a lot of money. But he doesn't get away with the road agent's requirement on that plan. Now, the, the he changed the scope of his place, right? There was supposed to be two buildings and the apartment above one. That, okay, that, that's that true. That didn't go. So the he, scope of his operation. He's still entitled to do that. Right. But, but he's got to continue this site plan. Right. Now, I know there was work done there, and in reading Mike's brief there, he says that he plans not to do any more site work. But he doesn't say the site work is incomplete in this letter to us. Who's the letter from? Mike Cummings. I thought so. Okay, so he, should say so he doesn't say to me it's incomplete. So I read that just a few minutes ago, and it says that he doesn't plan on doing any more, but I know from driving by there, there was a lot of work done there this week. You mean the left-hand side where the road, yeah. The, the yeah. driveway was upgraded. There was parking put in there. There was some more roadway done around the barn, all just seeing it from the side of the road. I haven't even driven up to the barn. All right. So, so, so I don't know if it's... Listen, let's get, let's get a clarification. This is unclear. Mike's got to give a... Limit. I don't know if it's not complete or incomplete. That's what, we need no, that's information. That's a perfect good, good example. We need to know officially what it is. But right. some of the things that he wants to not complete, he might be entitled to. Right. But some things he can't get... Away. Right. right. And I don't, He's got to delineate that. It's, I can't tell from this right. letter what is done or not done. So I don't want to come down on a homeowner or a landowner or a barn owner without knowing what is complete and what's not complete, you know, as a board. Well, he I really want to come down on him. I think at this point, we have to get some more information. Right. He was also, you know, he's out there uh, on a limb. How you stop commercial operations, you let them proceed. We filed the plan. So that's on the record already as a commercial operation. Mm -hmm. But the thing we have, just like with a Burger King or a restaurant, is they can't get a permit to use and occupy the premises until they fulfill the site plan in Concord, Goffstown, anything. Just like that. Yeah. That's not happening here. And what I'm trying to say is I think it's absurd. The guy's a, a very smart businessman. Something's odd here, very odd. Right. Now, he's complained about this work that Jeff well, it was got very expensive, like $30,000 or something, and he came back later and asked for minor modification. We got, he gave it to him. He had his engineer in tow, and now he doesn't want to do that, I guess. I'm, I'm speaking like it, we, we don't, don't know. We okay. don't know if it's done or not done. Right. I, I can't drive by and tell because right. I don't I, know what's I can't right. tell by that letter what the problem is. Let's, uh, let's, let's ask Mike uh, some questions here. He needs to be very specific about what's 
not completed, what's completed, and when we, when we had money but you yank them in. No, but before the next meeting, I want some more answers. I we think the person that could answer this is the road agent because he knows that there yes, but there the are plan other, that was other filed the, the, showed a retention pond of some sort. Well, that's the biggie. That's the biggie, the biggie. that he does but not want. Other to. things that you know, apply to the building or the use. I, I went by there several times. Somebody says there are horses in there and he's got some activity. That's not allowed right now. He doesn't have a permit to occupy and use the facility. And it's not much to do that. And, and I don't know what's done or not done. And like you said, we need a list of what is and what's not done. Whether Mike needs to bring Jeff with him or whoever he needs to inspect it or whatever. But right now, it's very vague and I can't. We can't. Yeah. No, we're, we're, I think we have consensus. Ironically, they did an excellent engineering job. There's no problem with the site plan on this thing. It's just not done. All right, Lena, you know, you see where we're headed. We need more information for sure. Um, of what, what specifically is not done. I did see where Mike did tell the homeowner that he needs to come back because if he's downscaling his site plan with you people and not going to do some things or it is and wants some more consideration that he needs to come back to your board for that consideration. We have to revoke that plan. Right. Somebody sees that a future buyer or something, yanks that out of the registry, they can put it in that apartment. Yeah. Think about that. I mean, it's just, that's just one example. But if they do it by the plan, there's no problem with it. Right. If he right. finishes the plan, he has a right not to do that right away. Right. But if it, it's on a filed plan, right. and if he's not going to do that, he's going to maybe shorten it up somehow, we have to file a revocation to, to, that, that's legally filed. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Lane, do you have enough? Okay. All right. We got these uh, fishing game permit the trap. Who does do I have to sign this or no? I don't. Uh, yes. I'm yes, you do. He accidentally the one filling it out accidentally signed his own name, but you need to right sign here. this. Right here. Right, right there. Unfold. Okay. This lets you know this is uh, this is for some beaver trap elimination, a uh, beaver elimination for blocking uh, some of our culverts on the uh, road agents. Uh, uh, Only within our right of way. <laughs> right. Right. Not on people's property. So. And the conservation wanted it made very clear that they do not want conservation land, town forest land, other land owned by the town trapped. That this is strictly under the guidance and direction of the road agent when he needs the assistance to remove nuisance yeah. beavers in the town. How long is this good for? One year. Okay. And back uh, again next year. But and as in the it past, just stated right on their town right away. Right. Okay. Um, in the past, there were old timers that would do this as a retirement hobby. Um, now there's no money in it to, you know, to get re get rid of the pelts and animals. So they have do have a fee associated with removing per beaver, and Jeff is aware of that. I think we talked about it a little bit last year. Yeah. That there would be a cost. And well, they're going to charge us to get rid yeah. of the beavers? Yeah, yeah they're saying that right now that they can see three beavers that are involved with this problem. So I think maybe we should have went to the Trappers Association and see if we could get it done for free. <laughs> I don't we think have, they exist anymore. No. Oh, the Trappers no, Association. That's good. Yeah, there's no. Okay. Good idea. I didn't know we were paying for it. I saw the $100 on it. I thought that's what they were going to no. get for a beaver pill. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mailbox is empty for now. Um, I'm going to open a public comment again. It's not anything. Good. Back row. Anything for public comment? Public comment, guys. Any more public comment? No. All set. All set. Okay, just enough said. Um, Dave, we're going to bring it back to you. Um, I brought up my only issues there. Um, one other thing. Hey, register your dog, will you? <laughs> my poor dog passed away. Um, I did read with New Hampshire Fire uh, Protection this week. Okay. And he said he would be more than willing to walk this building with us and talk about some sort of sprinkler system to protect our building, whether it's dry or wet or however. Okay. He says he does it every day of the week and he has no problem giving us an uh, estimate that we could kind of summarize the cost to. So um, I think that that would be a good step in starting to get yeah. some numbers to just see where we're at with that. And uh, so I'll plan on trying to schedule that in. And Lane, um, could we make a call at the office just to double check how Jeff is making out with his engineering? I know he was pretty eager to get in there and get that going. And 
I know we're all getting busy again, but fall's going to be upon us very quick again. So. And uh, speaking of the library, I just want to say, uh, I know there's an email that went out this week. Is there any update on the, uh, the roof shingles? Oh, uh, Sleep. Sort of um, yeah. He said that he was supposed to be scheduling. His response to me was that he was um, going to get a lift scheduled for the week of the 4th. So I'll have to ask the department to make sure they, if they see it, because I won't be here, that they let me know that he's been around. Lane, if they, if they let you know that he's around with it or whatever yep. if you can have me called I'd like to also yep. look at it because okay. it seems strange that there are pieces of that slate coming down not entire slate unless they're coming to the ground and cracking well, and no, pieces, said some of them been no, those, constructing. those pieces are probably from when they did the slate uh, a long time ago that she picked up they were two full slates that came off the roof I saw the full ones yeah, those so you pieces. think those pieces are from the first slate? I think they are. You think we can walk around the building now and pick up see slate everywhere. Because we had slate, then we had plastic, then we had slate again. Yes. Uh, those little pieces, that's when they were. Oh, so you don't think it's a slate issue? I don't think so. Well, that would be nice. You still want to call just so you can get me? I'd like to verify with it if he's going yeah. to go up in the lift with sure. himself. Yeah. Just to check it out myself. Okay. It'd be nice to confirm. A time? In advance? Well, yeah. I'm not so worried about that, well, but it'd be nice to confirm that there's not an issue with that building and the slate. No, the lift will pick you and Paul up at the same time. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else, Dan? No, I'm good, Mike. Bob, go ahead. No, that was, I was going to bring that up. Okay. okay. Just, well, I don't know if he responded because, okay. you know, I'm, I have a concern with you're going to have old home day and we have no idea what's going on up there, you know? I'm, okay, Mike, I've elected not to go to the White House. Uh, I was going to apply for the Broughton to fund me because it's not being funded by the White House, but we all got an invite to go to the White House. And, uh, oh, they were talking about the library. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the White House? Our White House. Being the only Republican up here, I should be going. <laughs> well, the thing is, they were going to offer it. The thing is, they have it like a workshop and uh, no lunch, but they were going to give water. No, they were. <laughs> Bottled at that. Oh, okay. Anything, now we'll get back to Lean. Anything else? Nope, uh, nothing for me right now. Um, I just hope that the, the board's aware I will be on vacation next week and I'll ask you to step up and just, uh, be in uh, communication uh, yeah, with, the, with the staff. There's, they're going to be light uh, okay. somewhat. Um, uh, sign, sign checks by what day? Wednesday. Have to be signed by Wednesday. The uh, treasurer has commitments on Thursday, Friday morning. So if they're not signed by so for her to sign on room. Thursday, then next oh, next Thursday the office is closed. Okay. So if they're not signed by Wednesday, then they won't be signed till about one o'clock on Friday. So that means the ones that have paper check will have to wait till the afternoon to get their check. Okay. So definitely Wednesday. I should be able to come in. I have no problem with that. All right. All done. Okay. I'm going to adjourn for one minute. Uh, we got a recess. We have a recess for one minute, one or two minutes. Don, we're going to go to non-public. So I'm going to ask you to okay. share your machine now, please. Do you want Ken in that? Ken, you can stay for this. You might be worth a while, please. Would that be it for this evening, then? <laughs>